Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. I'm going to make this live, so with no voiceover in the end, hopefully. And I had so many questions when I made the video about the adding silicone last, when the pour is already done, that I just want to make another short video explaining everything a bit more detailed than I did in this um, last video, because it only was a small part of it. I just wanted to let you know how it works and I had so many questions about the entire process so I'm just going through this step by step. I have already mixed up my colors. This is a purple, a white and a gold. And yeah, basically the same mixture as usual. Um, it's acrylic binder. You can also use Floatrol or your pouring medium. It's the color and water if needed. The consistency that I'm using is always pretty much the same. I do never measure anything. It's always eyeballed. And it's this kind of consistency. So let's see if you can see it. When it runs from the stick, it domes up for a second perhaps and then just combines with the rest of the paint. It is like, I don't know, cooking the same recipe for a thousand times. After a couple times you don't really need the recipe anymore because you just know. I guess everyone has its own preferred mixture, I'd say. So this is mine. <laughs> so there is no silicone in. The silicone that I'm going to use is this one. I have been using this silicone for, oh gosh, one and a half years now. So this is the best working for me. You don't really have to look out for this exact brand. It's 100% dimethicone, so there is no other stuff in there. This comes from the latex section and I just get this from Amazon. If you get around any other 100% dimethicone silicone, just use the one that you get. If you have a silicone that you like working with and that works for you, go for this one. Also, this is the surface I'm working on. It's a canvas board, 40 by 40 centimeters. It's pretty thin, as you can see, and this comes because I also had questions around this one. And I'm just going to remove the clear film. One of the many questions that I received was what I actually do with these panels to not have them robbed in the end. Um, it depends. These canvas boards come in cheap, super cheap and a bit more expensive. This is a pretty cheap one, but not among the cheapest. So just have a look at the surface. Most of them, or actually all of them, have this um, fabric that canvases also have, so the linen or something, and it should be white. When it is white, it is primed. Um, some of those canvases already say how often they are primed. This one doesn't, but the better they prime, two times, three times, four times, if it's written on there, the better. Meaning when you have layers of gesso on there, it is less likely for the water to hit the board itself. So your gesso is going to prevent that in a certain degree. If there is only one layer of gesso on this, so it is more likely that the water can go through to the board and the board can get wet and warp in the end. So if you're uncertain with your boards or if you work on really large boards like this, I would consider a large one for a board. Um, add more layers of gesso if you like. Or if you do not have gesso, just add a layer of acrylic paint, let it dry and this will also seal the surface that the water will not go through to the board itself. Another trick that I'm doing myself, especially when it's about um, drying time, I put one cup in the middle and one cup at each corner, like this. I do this style when I still work and pour and tilt and when everything is going to set aside to dry, I put them directly on the edges, like this. And this for me pretty much worked all the time to prevent bending. If you like, you can also add one on the sides here, if it's a large canvas, and just check how it works out for you. For me, it works pretty fine. Another trick that you can do as well is you're going to have some drip of paints underneath of the board itself. As it's pretty thin and not as thick as a canvas itself, you will have the paint moving around the edges. You can prevent this by adding some tape like this. I normally don't. I will make this here just to show it and hope it works out. <laughs> but this is actually a good 
a good trick to prevent the paint to ruin the entire canvas. Let's see how this works out. So preparation is done. Putting some gloves on to not mess too much around. So this here is just water. I put a bit of the water on top of this just to allow the paint to flow a bit easier over the entire thing. You can also use paint of course, but water does the job pretty well. But don't use too much of course, because you don't want everything to be soaked in water just, just before you started pouring. Excess water you can remove just with the kitchen towel, just bump it on there. So, and you're good to go. Just using a cup. And this is going to be a dirty pour, so no ring pour, no flip cup, just a regular dirty pour. It seems my mixture today is pretty thin. Sometimes it's a bit thicker. But again, I don't measure, so... And of course it was too much paint. <laughs> this is some of my things, you know. So, okay, let's just pretend this is the look you are going for. I'm still having a bit, little gold here in the edge, which I'm going to correct with just pure gold from the cup. This can happen if your mixture was too thin, which mine was, as I said. Perhaps it was too much water which I added onto there. You never know. Just have to deal with it. <laughs> and those sticks, they are just some wooden sticks which I've reused a million times now. I'm using them for acrylics, I'm using them for the resin. So if they are used for the resin, it seals the acrylics that are on there. So you can reuse them for the next time acrylics. It's pretty nice. So something you might want to do as well. It's just saving money. And the purple is pretty light now. It will dry much darker and the gold also will dry really golden. It looks a bit more pastel-like at the moment. For those of you who know my videos already, you will know that this will look pretty sweet color-wise in the end. Let's just hope that the design also will be pretty sweet when the silicone is added. As first, I'm going to torch this a bit just to remove the air bubbles in there. It should not do anything when it comes to cell creation. And just a side note, just to figure out how you're going to get cells in the end. If you have areas where the colors overlap each other, like this area here where the gold is over the purple, or here where the white is feathering into the purple, or this area here, when all these colors lap over each other and you add a silicone, you will get cells popping up. 
if you have massive areas like this area here, perhaps there is some gold underneath. I, I'm not really sure, but if it isn't and it's massive purple, you will get, there will not be anything happening, of course, because there is no paint that can come through in the end. So or here this might be completely golden, so these areas will not be affected by the silicone itself. But we will see, you never know. And what I actually did in my last video is just using the silicone, putting it onto my fingers and yeah, pushing it onto there. It might also work if you use a toothbrush or something and, you know, flick it on there or brush or whatever you want to use. Um, this is pretty random though, so you cannot really control it. You can probably use a sheet of paper and protect a certain area to not get any silicone on there. Never tried it, might work, just be careful to not dump it in there. I might be lucky and dump it in there. <laughs> but I just trying to keep things as simple as possible. So last time I just put some of this onto my fingers. Not too much. Like this. I don't see it. And then just made like this. And how big the cells become that you get, or if you get cells in the end, or how many, depends a bit of your paint mixture as well. If we have really thick paint, you will get lesser cells. If you get, if you have really thin paint, your cells get a bit bigger and larger. This is totally up to the mixture that you are having, so cannot really predict this. I normally end up getting pretty small cells because my paint is not too liquid. I know that some holes out there where the paint is really, really fluid and flows way more than mine does. So this is actually the size of cells that I usually get. They, of course, grow over time. And just to show you what happens when you torch it again. You see, nothing. <laughs> And why nothing happens, you can see in my acrylic pouring basic videos. I will link this here somewhere in this video as well. It basically covers many aspects of the physics behind the entire thing. The heat actually does only bring the silicone up when there is silicone mixed in the paints. So it doesn't really do anything more. When you put the silicone on top of this and you put a heat gun over it, of course nothing happens because the silicone is already on top. So. This is actually everything that I can show you for this project here. I will let this dry and we will have a look at this tomorrow when everything is dried, how it looks. And yeah, you can let me know if you like the design and the end result. Welcome back everyone. It is two days later. I did not touch it ever since. I just let it dry. And as you can see, I also put four of these cups underneath the sides just to protect it from yeah, warping. And this is how it looks like. It is still glued to the surface, as you can hear. So I did not even remove the drip off to make it authentic. So this is all the paints that dried here. And First thing that I usually do is removing the largest part of the silicone. So, therefore, I just use these kitchen wipes. They are pre wetted and this works pretty fine. And just go over there. A couple of times. In 
and this works pretty great. I wouldn't recommend doing this on really large canvases, so as a first step perhaps, but if you want to remove the silicone completely on larger pieces, also use the flour or baby powder workaround just to get rid of most of it. And this is the back side, as promised. When you remove the tape, most of the back side should be clean. Remove it slowly, otherwise you might risk damaging the paper. And the better you tape it, the better the end result is going to be, actually. If you want to be super careful and not risking ripping any of the paper apart, you can use a hairdryer and warm up these tape thingies and it's going to be easier to remove them. And this is the end result. As you can see, it is pretty much unwarped, even for such of a size. If it's warped a little bit, you can put it on an even surface, like your floor or a table or something. Let it be for two days or so and you will be fine. And yeah, last step will just be varnishing this. If you are afraid of having gaps in your varnish, you can make a thin layer of varnish in the first place. Let it dry and then varnish it with a thicker layer if you want to have an even and no brush stroke uh, version. <laughs> this is actually what I do. Um, if you make a thicker varnish pour right on top of this and you have these little dents, this is not as pretty, so this is normally the way I make it. So if I have a thin layer of varnish, just put it over there, let it dry and then make another pour a bit thicker that itself levels a bit and you have a, and you're going to have a somewhat close to resin finish. And now in the end I'm going to hover over this piece so that you can see all the little cells and the structures that the metallic gold did. And as you can see this works pretty well. It does not work for larger cells as mentioned before. It gives you many smaller cells, of course, it's part of the game. So I wouldn't recommend using this method for a really large painting except you want to have many cells in a certain area, but probably not over the entire piece. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope it was something of interest for you and you are excited to test this out on your own pieces. And if you have still any question open, please let me know. We'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. And yeah, leave me a like and subscribe to my channel, of course. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a great time. Bye bye.